Hi there, this is the Rangers News YouTube channel and it's Jordan Carlyle again alongside James Black. How are you doing? Um, and we're going to have a look at a high profile retirement. Uh, yes. Last week, Kenny Miller, uh, Scotland Rangers and 11 other clubs. Um, a striker retired after being let go, surprisingly let go by Partick Thistle. He admitted that that was a surprise and... Uh, you know, they'd recruited in forward areas, let him go, and then he had a bit of a think about it and retired. Uh, mixed reaction, quite a lot of it positive mm -hmm. online. Uh, some who will say that, you know, because of certain things said about the club after his departure or the way he played during his third stint or the fact that he played for Celtic, in between all of this, sort of muddies his Rangers record a little bit. But we're just going to ask, what sort of stature does he deserve in terms of Rangers history? Let, let's, let's cut to the gist of it, Jordan. Uh -huh. Is Kenny Miller a Rangers legend? That's the, that's the question. That's the question. Is and Kenny Miller a and, Rangers and legend? And who's answering it? <laughs> I think he is. You think um, he is? I do. And uh, it's a very borderline one, because if you ask me another day, I might very well say that he's not. Um, but today, yeah, no, he has. <laughs> <Today. laughs> no, the wind's blowing, I, I, he is. I it? think if you, if you look at his overall contribution, you look at what he won, what he done, I, I think it's hard to argue that he's not. There are obviously some black marks, the way the manner of his exit, being an ex Celtic player. You know, I mean, that's, that's just kind of a big red flag in and of itself. Yeah. He played for them. Yeah. Um, and I think there are kind of little bits and pieces that what, and I think plenty of people will completely argue that Kenny Miller is not a Rangers legend. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. But for me, yeah, no, it's... When you see some of the other names that people hold up as being Rangers legends, yeah. like, I'll give you one, Nacho Novo, tell you... People tell me that Nacho Novo the Rangers legend. Now, yeah. I love Nacho. Tell me what he done that Kenny Miller didn't. Yeah. Apart from saying no thanks. Yeah, <laughs> well, that is true. That's a very key part of it, is it not, for a lot of people. Uh, for Novo, yeah, he's a, he is a cult hero, I would say, more accurately than a, a guy who was absolutely adored mm -hmm. while he was there and, and did some great things in the shirt, but... Yeah, I, my thing for Miller, I I find it I find legend a very difficult thing to to get around sometimes because I think it really needs to be like super esteemed and I so I understand that the guys played for the club three times. First one was before my time, a little bit. Uh, the third you one. You just go out your way now and that's to make me feel old <laughs> at least once. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, uh, but the third and the third one is then an in different circumstances to then many p what many people would hold up as a Rangers legend, mm -hmm. as in competing for things and winning the Scottish Championship and winning the Petrofac Training Cup, the Challenge Cup, those sorts of things. So, but that so the the other, it's I think it's a very hard thing to compete with because that's also not his fault that he's competing for those trophies when he's there in the, in his third stint. If it was a Rangers team going for the league, though, would he have been good enough to be in the team? As in going for the top flight title at this stage, so would he get would he get his third stint? Yeah, I think he probably would have. You think he would have? Yeah, I mean, when he came back the third time, when he came back from Vancouver Whitecaps. I know people kind of look at the MLS <laughs> as a. You love it. I, I do. I, I, <laughs> people can look at it as a jokey comedy league, but I'll, I'll hold it up against the Scottish Premiership any day of the week. Um, but that's a big show. No, I mean, but you're not talking. That's a very big show. No, because you're talking like there's a guy, Miller, who's. He could have quite comfortably kept playing at the top level then. Um, and I think, all right, coming back at the third time certainly never really worked out for him. But you he look at the. moving deeper and stuff, didn't they? Yeah, then? you look at the second spell in particular, though. And to he, he carried that team for a long time. He was he was a big big part of he was a big big part of how successful Chris Boyd was as a Rangers number nine, and I think that kind of goes forgotten a little bit sometimes. Um, just quite how important Miller was to a lot of Boyd's goals and a, a lot of Boyd's kind of performances, kind of doing the running of two men when 
boy just hung about the penalty spot and yeah. you know Miller was the one that done the running and the chasing and the, the harrying. He, cer- he certainly worked hard and worked hard up until recently. I saw him recently. Um, oh, he's in one still of his, chasing Chris Pokes. Yeah, one of his last games then as it turned out to be. I don't think he knew at the time but against Dundee United and he was a little, he missed a few chances, scored near the end but the thing was that he did he did run potentially more than anyone else in the pitch, and he's mm-hmm. forty years old. Which I th- I think there's a lot to respect about what he's done, and that the ta- the the tallies and stuff that uh, that we were looking beforehand, two hundred and sixty games for Rangers in all competitions, one hundred and three goals, fifty seven assists. Like it's hard to it is hard hard to argue with that. There's not too many who are going to be putting up those stats, as you talk about in that second spell. I think it's fifty league goals in eighty games or something. As a brilliant return, and he's won three leagues. And, and that's that's a centre forward who was never really regarded as a goal scorer. You know, nobody ever. You never, yeah. you never really kind of looked at kind of Miller and says he was the one that was going to go and grab you twenty twenty five goals a season. But his second stint, uh, that was what he was doing. Yeah. He was, I, I do. I think he's unfairly maligned at sometimes. Um, it doesn't help himself. Yeah. I'll say that much. There's been times when he's been on radio and on TV and stuff, and you're like, "What are you saying, you tit?" Oh, he's been quite bitter, hasn't ah, he? Oh, a absolutely. lot of the time about the he'll talk about you know how he didn't get a chance to say goodbye to staff and stuff in the building when he was let go the third time and and how that sits with him and there was also criticizing people. There's also the club. a lot of stuff that kind of went unseen by people that he never really got credit for. So years back, I mean, this would have been maybe 2015, 2016, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, at under twenties games, he was going along helping out coaching the under twenties. Well, that's something that that's true as well because we, um, we spoke to Zach Rodden recently mm-hmm. after he moved, and he actually said that you know Kenny was my coach. So at that point, he was joining up with him at Partick Thistle to be like, you know, will you form a strike partnership basically, mm-hmm. and how well do you know him? And he was like, well, he's actually coached me at youth level at Rangers. So that's something, yeah, as a a club man behind the scenes, he was obviously looking at that stage towards going into a career coaching at some point, so it benefits him, but he's also given back to the club. I, I think it's a, a difficult one. You talk like f- I think it's five major honours mm-hmm. yep. and a couple of other ones at a time when major honours weren't on offer. That's all you can do. Great goal return. Uh, it's, just, it's just the word legend, I think, needs to be like so, like so, so beyond other stuff, but I also, but I do think it's, he deserves a lot of credit for what he's done, and I don't think he should be maligned. It, it is a we- it's a weird scenario where someone leaves, goes to Celtic, comes back, goes. It's it's a it's a unique path oh, yeah. that he's had, yeah, a totally yeah. unique path. But he did well for Rangers, did well for Scotland, did well for other clubs at different stages of his career, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. No, I, I mean I'd go as far as I'd put him up against almost any Rangers player. Of the twenty first century, I mean, there's, there's very few that you could actually put up against them and go. They've they've got a a better all round legacy, and I'm kind of struggling to think. Of. There's there's a few <sighs> Barry Barry Ferguson's, and yeah. there are some, but there's no many. I think uh, I saw people talking as well about whether he's the best Scottish striker, just in general in that era because of his longevity and the fact that he scored goals for. The fact he scored f- goals in four different decades is a mental stat. So I think it was 1998 or something mm-hmm. he scored his first goal yep. and scored in the new year against Celtic for, for Pardick. So I don't know. It's one that I think a lot of people will be divided on, but I think a lot of people, sh- like there should be an appreciation there oh, when absolutely. someone leaves and, that and has done all that. And there's times where he did it when Rangers were on top of the world and also when they were trying to get back to that stage. So he certainly deserves a good piece of Rangers history.